Hey, what's up, everybody? Coach Matt, Primal Athlete Training Center, www.primalatc.com. Hey, check it out. The other day we did a video for you that talked about if I only had one exercise that I could do to get more explosive and to become a better thrower, what would it be? And I picked a power clean and jerk, similar to you know the Olympic lifting movement, the competitive movement, the clean and jerk that you would see if you were to watch the Summer Olympics. And a lot of people in that video, I had mentioned that we don't really do Olympic lifting here at the gym. And that raised a lot of eyebrows. People were sending in emails and asking questions saying, well, if you don't do Olympic lifts, I mean, how are you guys getting explosive? What exercises are you doing to get explosive? I mean, you work with throwers, you work with track and field athletes. How are you not doing the Olympic lifts? It was almost like I was like a, bla a, a blasphemer saying that I don't do Olympic lifts. We had a lot of purists and a lot of coaches who have been around the game for a long time that were emailing me and saying, you know, you shouldn't spread these lies. You shouldn't say this to certain people and you shouldn't put this out there on, on YouTube that, you know, you don't do the Olympic lifts because everybody Olympic lifts. It's just the way it's always been. So the question was raised and again, that's what I do. So I wanted to quickly go through, I actually started writing out a list and saying, all right, well, what do we do here that gets people so explosive? What is it? Well, we break it down to about five different things, one of which the one here that's blocked off, we don't actually do here in the gym, but that's what I want my throwers doing when they are out at practice, out with their teams. So we're going to start off with jumps. Now, just to go down the list, we have box jumps, jumping up onto a high box, seated box jumps. That's similar to a, uh, a box squat where you're sitting down on one box, jumping up on the other. Depth jumps, jumping off of a tall box, reacting as soon as both feet hit the ground and then jumping up onto another box. So jumping off one box, jumping onto another box. Jumping squats or repeat jumping squats, getting into a squat position with just your body weight, jumping as high as possible, landing in a squat, jumping as high as possible, landing in a squat, jumping as high as possible. Jumping lunges, same idea, starting in a lunge, jumping as high as you can, switching your feet in midair, Landing in a lunge, jumping as high as you can, switching your feet in midair, and going over and over and over again. Repeat hurdle hops, putting three or four hurdles in a row at different heights, sometimes really high, sometimes low, sometimes a combination. Jumping over, repeat, reacting to your feet hitting the ground, jumping over uh, hurdle by hurdle. And you've got the combination. So what's stopping you from doing a depth jump off of a really high box and then jumping over a couple of hurdles. What's stopping you from, say, doing a seated box jump and then onto another box and then jumping off onto another box? So you're combining some of these methods together. The possibilities are basically endless. From there, we move on to our Olympic lifting variations. So we're not doing your classical Olympic lifts. We're not doing things like, you know, cleans, uh, hang cleans, clean and jerk, snatches, hang snatches. We're not doing uh, the traditional Olympic lifts that you would see in a lot of high school and college weight rooms. We're doing variations. So we have a one-arm dumbbell clean where you're just starting down, cleaning the dumbbell up to one side. We have the one-arm dumbbell clean and press. We have the dumbbell snatch all the way up in the air. We can do that with one dumbbell or with two dumbbells into that snatch. Dumbbell jerks, we can do one arm or two arms. Dumbbell push press, one arm or two arms. We have the barbell push press. So just get your Olympic lifting bar, unrack it in the uh, catch uh, position, the caught position, and push press. Behind the neck jerks, great exercise to teach explosive upper body and connecting the lower and upper body together and just regular split jerks from the front. So we do a lot of Olympic lifting variations that don't necessarily have the time or the energy put into teaching proper form and technique, and the injury risk is a lot lower as well for some of these younger high school athletes that are just starting out. Great way to get them started. Throws, now these are things that we don't do here. As you see in the videos, we have a small gym with a low ceiling, so we don't do a lot of throws, but you can do these outside at practice, and you probably already have the equipment anyway. So medicine ball throws, all the different variations that are out there of medicine ball throws. Again, there are one hour and two hour long videos on medicine ball throws. Throwing light shot puts, 
throwing heavy shot puts. This also goes with heavy and light hammers with longer and shorter wires, overweight and underweight discs, uh, heavier or longer javelins, you know, the long tom javelins as well if you're just starting out training javelins. Throwing puds, you know, uh, Dane Smith out at uh, Garage Strength, he throws, and uh, Bondarchuk up in uh, Canada, they're out there throwing cinder blocks, they're out there throwing heavy and light dumbbells. Uh, the discus throwing balls that you see in catalogs, the javelin knocking balls that you see in catalogs, uh, bowling pins, which traditionally are great for, for discus, grabbing onto one end and throwing it like a discus, uh, weighted pipes, rebar, a lot of stuff that you can do. We've had uh, bottles of soda, bottles of water filled up with rocks or with sand. You can throw those as well. All the different throws that are going to get you more explosive that aren't Olympic lifts. Then we have our speed lifts. So those of you familiar with conjugate system, Louis Simmons, Westside Barbell, you've got your speed squats, speed bench press, and your speed deadlifts. So this is, would be on your uh, dynamic effort day, if you want to break it down that way. We have box squats. Again, these are just with straight weight, box squats. Then there is what's called the future method, or the lightning method, where you have bands hanging from the top of a rack and you're able to overload, overload the bar to move a heavier weight faster off your chest or out of the bottom of a squat or deadlift than you normally would be able to. You have the band resistance where now the bands are connected at the bottom and they're adding resistance as you squat up. Same idea. Now you're fighting against band tension lighter at the bottom and you can move it a lot faster and become more explosive doing it that way. Now on top of all this, we have this little corner down here that says homemade. So we have some of our homemade equipment that we use in the gym. We have our homemade uh, sandbags out of Army Navy, the green uh, duffel bags that we've made. And we can do everything with this. We can do, you know, cleans. We can do cleans and presses with those. A lot of different things as well. Again, not using a bar, but it's an Olympic lifting variation using a sandbag. We also have our Bulgarian bags. Now the Bulgarian bags are made out of inner tubes and they're filled with sand. We'll put these in our arms, we'll put these on our necks when we're doing our jumps, when we're doing our jumping lunges, and use that as extra weight to, again, for the stronger, bigger guys and girls in here, provide a little bit of extra resistance to some of these jumping movements that we showed you before. And now a lot of you might still be asking, well, why not? You know, do you have something against the Olympic lifts? Do you have something against uh, doing you know, these Olympic movements? And my answer really is no, I think they're great exercises. There's nothing wrong with doing those exercises, but for us, it's really not a practical uh, way to get athletes explosive. First and foremost, it takes a long time to teach proper form. And if you're spending too much time, pro uh, too much time teaching proper form, you're not going to be spending uh, enough time using proper weight. The other issue with Olympic lifts that I've found, especially at the high school level, is that you are extremely prone to injury when doing them if you're not being taught correctly. So you have the people that don't take the time to teach the Olympic lifts properly that just end up throwing on a bunch of weight and then aren't teaching things like getting the athlete's joints more mobile, not taking time to do a proper warm-up, not taking time to uh, you know, get them flexible in the right areas, and you end up with a lot of kids with you know, sore backs, really sore hamstrings, and uh, really injured uh, hands, injured fingers, injured shoulders because they're just not ready to do the Olympic lifting movements. Physically, they just have not been prepared enough to do those Olympic lifting movements. Now, with Olympic lifting, and I'm gonna end it at this, with Olympic lifting movements and any type of explosive lifting movements that you might do, keep in mind that they are explosive. We talked about this plenty of times before. Explosive movements are not done for high repetitions. Explosive movements are not done for endurance. Your explosive movements are going to be done less than five repetitions. So if you're doing something like repeat hurdle hops, four to five hurdles maximum. Probably better off being in that three range. If you're doing something like a dumbbell jerk or a behind the neck jerk, or if you're doing a sandbag clean, if you're doing a speed squat with band resistance, if you're doing a speed bench with the future method, with the lightning method, you don't wanna be doing sets of eight, sets of 10, sets of 15. You wanna be doing sets of two, sets of three, maybe maximum sets of four and five. So you really want to make sure that if you want to do an explosive movement, whether that's one of these listed here or your traditional Olympic lifts, explosive movements are light to medium weight, 
moving that weight as powerful, as quickly as possible, as explosively as possible for a minimum number of reps, two to five, one really, one to five rep range is going to be where you want to be on those lifts. You can do a lot of sets, nine sets, eight sets, seven sets, 10 sets, whatever you want to do, but keep the repetitions low so that the movement stays quick. Now, I know this is probably going to raise a lot of questions and raise a lot of issues. If it does, please make sure to ask. I would love to explain a little bit more. If there's interest out there from all of you, if there is, leave a comment underneath the YouTube video that you're watching this on right now, or shoot me an email, matt at primalatc.com. Talk to you soon.